Good evening and welcome to Know Your Rights. This is the show where you hear directly from the lawyers who break down the law and explain the rights of citizens on common legal issues that confront Belizeans on a regular basis. Tonight, we will be discussing children's rights. Children are innocent and vulnerable. However, countless times their rights are either neglected or ignored. It is the responsibility of every adult to ensure that they're protected and their voices are heard. Joining us to give insight on this important topic is attorney at law and legal consultant, Diana Shaw. Good evening and welcome, Ms. Diana. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, especially to discuss such a heavy topic, yeah. right? Um, recently in the media, we see a lot of very negative things happening to our children. So I'm very thankful that you can be here to give us the legal perspective. So let's start with the definition of the child. Yes. Who is considered a child? All right, so legally, a child is a person who is under the age of 18 years. Okay. And this is not an arbitrary definition. It's defined by law. It's set out in the Convention on the Rights of the Child and also in our Families and Children's Act. It defines a child as a person under the age of 18 years. Okay. So when it comes to the rights of children, what does it mean when you say children have rights? Mm. Because I know we come from a traditional family where it's honor thy mother and father. Your parents are telling you, I bring you into this world, I could take you out. Is it, is it exactly so? Well, yes and no. Uh, children have rights. When we say children have rights, it's not a new concept. Children always had rights. They okay. have rights firstly as human beings, and all human beings have rights. But we have established specialized mechanisms for recognizing the rights that children already have. Okay. So that special mechanism is the Convention on the Rights of the Child, and it sets out some basic entitlements that children should have, some basic protections that all children regardless of who they are, regardless of where they are from, okay. that they are entitled to experience where they live. Okay, so this is something similar to the Declaration of Human Rights, like how, how we sign on to that, That's where right. just the basics of Flows all from humans that. should have that. Yes. So what are some of the areas covered under the CRC? The CRC, the Convention. So we shorten it, we say CRC for short, mm -hmm. Convention on the Rights of the Child, and it covers all aspects of children's life. So it establishes some basic things like, for instance, a child has a right to an education, which okay. is one we readily recognize. This is okay. why our governments build schools, okay. because they are protecting that right and allowing children to experience that right. Some other ones that may be not so popular, it establishes that children have a right to play and to leisure. Okay. So sometimes we don't readily recognize that, but yes. it is actually also a developmental need. Children need to socialize, they need to be able to run and play and experience nature and it's a right that is protected by the CRC. Okay. Children also have a right to health. They have a right to ensure that their medical needs are met, that if they're sick, they should get medical assistance, that certain things that can be prevented, they should be vaccinated from, those kinds of things are protected by the right to health. They also have a right to an adequate standard of living. So they should have their basic food needs met, they should have shelter, mm -hmm. clothing that's appropriate for their age and to protect them from the elements. These are some of the basic things that they need for survival. Yeah. But it also speaks to some rights that also talks about the protective mechanism that should exist for children. So okay. the CRC establishes very clearly mm -hmm. that children have the right to be protected from abuse and exploitation and neglect. And if something happens to cause them to be abused, they also have a right to receive rehabilitation that okay. is something that will allow them to be rehabilitated to recover from whatever has happened, the abuse. But it should be provided in a way that recognizes a child's dignity and that is mm -hmm. you know, supportive of the fact that they, they still are a person, those kinds of things. So this CRC is a, is a bill of rights for children in a okay. sense that spells out some basic entitlements that all children need in order for them to achieve their full developmental potential. And also because even though they are children, they yeah. are also citizens. Yeah. And all rights that citizens have, children have as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that was the main goal in, in sort of establishing yes. the CRC, uh, solidifying them exactly. as members of the society. That's right. Putting them at rights. Yeah. Um, I, it's interesting that you said uh, some of these things might seem basic, but yes. it has to be there. Yes. And I, I'm guessing that's because 
you, we take it for granted here in Belize, but in a lot of the other countries, children are yes. deprived of this, right? Exactly. Is the CRC something that other countries sign on to? Yes. So this is a very important international instrument. This is the most signed convention of all international conventions, and there are oh. hundreds of them. Okay. It is the one that is signed by most countries in the world. It okay. has been signed by over 193, I think at the last count, there's 193 countries that have signed. Okay. And okay. Belize is actually the fifth country in the world to have signed the CRC in 1990. Okay. Yeah. So we, we get props for that because that was a very early recognition on the part of Belize okay. that it was necessary for us to be a part of this mechanism that was recognizing basic guarantees mm -hmm. for children and that the state was accepting its responsibility that mm. it needed to guarantee these rights mm -hmm. for children. So that was very good. I love how you touch on the point just now with the state accepting its responsibility. So I yeah. want to go in now on what are the responsibilities of the state? Is it a lot of what you just mentioned in yes. the area? So the overall responsibility of protecting the rights of children falls to the state. But the state is not the only duty bearer. It is the ultimate duty bearer, okay. but they are also first the parents. So yes. every parent has a right to guarantee the rights that children have under the CRC. Okay. And as the first person that has contact with the child, their interaction with the child, the way they raise children, should be recognizing these mm -hmm. rights and should also be empowering children to experience these rights. So the other thing that the state does and has a responsibility to do is to educate the public, that they also have the responsibility okay. to protect the rights of children. Awareness. The uh, public awareness okay. uh, mechanism okay. there is there. And the state also has a responsibility to establish the institutional mechanisms okay. that are necessary to make the rights operative. Mm -hmm. Because the state guarantees the rights in legislation. The state mm -hmm. guarantees the rights by ensuring that they sign on to the commitments, that they pass appropriate budgets. But the institutional mechanisms are what put boots on the ground to ensure that you have the persons that will go into homes to ensure that children are being protected, that there is a situation where a child needs additional protection outside of its parents and that will be provided. Mm -hmm. And the community is also a duty bearer. And we have established other mechanisms. So we have the CRC, which is what we call the parent document, the Bill of Rights for Children. Okay. But Belize went further. In, in addition to signing and ratifying the CRC, we incorporated it into our local law. Okay. So the CRC is a part of the laws of Belize. Okay. So it's not just an international instrument. We yes. can quote it just as we quote the Families and Children's Act. It is a part of I the see. Families and Children's Act. I see. So this gives an additional mechanism mm -hmm. for children, something that is not well appreciated. Children in Belize can actually enforce the CRC. Yes. They can actually enforce yes. it because it is a part of the Families and Children's Act. Mm -hmm. And they can use it as a mechanism for accessing the court to protect their rights. Mm -hmm. I love how you got so deeply into the integration of just these conventions into the system. Because a lot of times when um, the international community presents such conventions, we look at the content, we look at what's it about, and we say, yes, we want to do that, we want to do that. But you mentioned so many different aspects and instruments that have to be placed into the existing yes. structure of the country. So I like how you got into that. And I want you to expand a little bit more on the institutions, because you said yes. these are this is the working arm, this is the executing body. Yes. What are the institutions that had to be in place by state whether, or not by state, not non-governmental institutions as well. But first to the state ones. The state okay. ones are the primary because the state is the ultimate duty bearer. And in Belize, we have firstly the Department of Human Services, okay. which is the primary state institution that is responsible for protecting the rights of children. But they are a part of a ministry, the Ministry of Human Development, Social Transformation and Poverty Alleviation that mm -hmm. has the main responsibility as the state's arm for advancing the protection of the rights of children and also of women okay. and, and, and men as well. Mm -hmm. So the state mechanism includes the Department of Human Services and then also the Community Rehabilitation Department. Mm -hmm. And so whereas the Department of Human Services focuses a lot on children who have been abused or neglected, um, mm -hmm. children who have been exploited, yes. the Community Rehabilitation Department focuses on children who have come in conflict with the law and those children also are protected by the CRC. Okay. And they have a right that if they are in conflict with the law, that the state will recognize that they, their rights to a fair hearing, their right to legal representation where that can be provided, the right to a separate mechanism to adjudicate their matters so that they are not treated in the court system as adults, that okay. there is a responsibility on the yeah. state for those things. Yeah. And the community rehabilitation department carries that out. Mm -hmm. More recently, we have also recognized, because Belize not only signed onto the CRC 
and some other conventions like the, the Beijing um, guidelines and those kinds of things that deal with juvenile justice. We have also signed on to a number of ILO conventions. And those ILO conventions have also put a responsibility on the states to address other issues that traditionally we didn't look at as part of protection because they didn't deal outright with physical or sexual abuse. Things, for instance, like child labor. So okay. child labor is also part of the protection um, that states should guarantee that yeah. children are protected from child labor, especially the worst forms of child labor. Yeah. And Belize has now reestablished its child labor committee yeah. to address those issues. So Belize has some good state mechanisms, some institutional mechanisms mm -hmm. that have been there, some of them that have recently been re-energized to ensure that we are addressing these basic protections that are guaranteed by the CRC. But in addition to the state mechanisms, Belize also has a very wide and active civil society. And the civil society is comprised of registered NGO organizations as well as community-based organizations, which may, which may not be as formal, mm -hmm. but there may be at the community level, there are associations or women's groups or mm -hmm. churches or other faith-based organizations who actually are the main delivery mechanisms mm -hmm. for protecting the rights of children because they interface with families daily. Yeah. And they provide services, um, yeah. food, shelter, advice, mm -hmm. encouragement mm -hmm. that maintains stability of families and ensures that children are protected. Yeah, yeah. So we have to take a very short break, right? We have a lot, still, uh, still a lot more to cover. But when we get back, we will continue our discussion on children's rights. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija Usher, and our guest tonight is attorney Diana Shaw, and we are discussing the rights of children. So, Ms. Diana, I have a devil's advocate question. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are saying now that picnic got too much rights now. You can't do no, nothing, you can't even parent there like how they used to. Does the CRC speak to how parenting is done and Particularly, I want you to, if you could, get into the whole idea of um, corporal punishment. Because that, that is something, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. So, this is interesting, indeed, for a lot of people when we talk about rights of children, it always gets back to that. A lot of people measure whether they feel that children are experiencing rights or not experiencing rights by whether parents should have the right to beat children, which is, not, is a wrong measure, as there are so many other things that need to be involved in that discussion. But yes, the CRC as a mechanism for recognizing the rights of um, children recognizes that the child lives one in a community and one the best um, means of protecting the welfare of children is in a family unit. So actually one of the rights of children that okay. is protected by the CRC is the right to parental contact and the right to family connectedness. So, and it's something that the state should guarantee. The state should never override parental responsibility or parental contact unless the parent is dangerous to the welfare of the child. Mm -hmm. And this is something that our Families and Children's Act also guarantees. Okay. So it's not that the CRC is trying to separate children from parents and trying to create a mechanism where parents no longer have a say in parenting. No, no, no. Okay. The CRC is actually supposed to strengthen parenting. Okay. What it's supposed to do is to help parent to see yeah. what are the developmental needs of children. Yeah. What are the things that you as a parent should mm -hmm. be doing to mm -hmm. ensure that your child becomes an active and productive member of society. Mm -hmm. You want to ensure that they understand that they have the right to an education. So you want to ensure that they are in school. You want to ensure that they understand that they have the right to health. So you mm -hmm. want to ensure that you protect their health. Yeah. Provide them with vaccination that you, if they are sick that you address that. So it's not that the CRC is doing something outside of parenting. Mm. If you are a parent that is interested in the development of your child and your child fulfilling their potential, you should see the CRC as an empowering document. Mm -hmm. Something that is saying to you as a parent, this yeah. is a guideline for some basic standards that as a parent, you should follow to ensure that your child achieves their full developmental potential. In addition, the CRC also establishes in the CRC document itself that okay. children not only have rights, that they have responsibilities. Okay. And it is the responsibility of the parent and the other duty bearers to also teach children 
about their responsibility as children. Okay. And almost all of the rights are balanced by responsibility, and this is something that parents should teach. Mm -hmm. So the child has a right to an education, and the child has a responsibility to be in school when the parent sends them to school to okay. do their homework that is assigned by the school and by the teacher. Mm -hmm. This is what parents should teach. Mm -hmm. And if you teach children their rights and their responsibility, then the parenting relationship will be strengthened and the mm -hmm. child will achieve their developmental potential. But a lot of times, parents get into this crosshairs of being they are quarreling or they are being feel that they are in competition with the state mechanism or the rights mechanism for children and that this is something taking away their some or taking away their right as a parent, but that is not the truth. It's actually okay. the opposite. Okay. So do you feel that the proper measures are being uh, put in place, especially by the state in this event, that the parenting is evolving with these the types CRC. of cases. So this is where we have had the gap. Okay. And I think this is why parents yeah. have seen or felt that they are being pushed back and that they are yeah. somehow losing ground in their parenting power or authority. Yeah. Because we started and we had to be, I think it was necessary for the state to take an aggressive approach to establish that children have rights and that there is no going back from that. This okay. is the line in the sun. Uh -huh. We have signed this convention and from this point forward, we are protecting and advancing the rights of children. Okay. It was necessary for the state to make that statement and to take that aggressive stand because we had to bring a change mm -hmm. in the culture and it was an uncomfortable change. And, like the, way to, shock. and yeah. the way to yeah. do an uncomfortable change is just to go into it, yeah. right? <laughs> it's yeah. the easiest way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But now that we have done that and that is out there and people know that is not debatable anymore because it is known. Now we have to take a step back now to build back that parental capacity for them to understand that this is an important instrument. And I think that even now, the NCFC, for instance, the National Committee for Families and Children, mm -hmm. they are preparing parenting manuals. They are something that they're going to be rolling out mm -hmm. to talk about, to address some of the gaps that parents have in understanding how to support the developmental needs of their children while guaranteeing basic rights. And also supporting community organizations. I, I think, as I said, NGOs, yeah. the community-based organizations are the main delivery mechanisms yeah. for protecting children and mm -hmm. for supporting families. It's not the state. Mm -hmm. The state is not going to reach you in your community somewhere in rural Cayo or somewhere in Orange Walk. It's very unlikely. It's a community-based mm -hmm. mechanism that's going to have the first interaction. And we now need to strengthen mm -hmm. those community-based mechanisms so that we don't have this unequal load being on the state mechanisms that they really should not be carried. Yeah, and it's interesting because we were having a discussion right before the show, mm -hmm. and I told you, I, I, I personally, I don't like when an incident happens and the first thing we run to is the state. I feel like mechanisms should be in place before, before. we reach the state level. There are a lot of items or conditions under the CRC, yes. a lot, yes. right? A uh, lot of standards to meet. How do we measure, you would say, how well uh, we are living up to the conventions? All right. So the CRC has a mechanism in it of reporting, mm -hmm. and it is there is an actual committee um, within the UN mechanism that oversees the implementation of the CRC by the countries who have signed on to it. And that oversight is really just a review and an assessment of the reporting process. The countries are required to update the committee on the progresses that they have made okay. over the years towards advancing the rights and guarantees of the CRC, challenges that they are facing, and then the committee gives recommendations. And those recommendations are pretty much like mandates to the state about gaps and areas that they need to address. Now, one of the things with Belize, and this is somehow we have gotten a black eye in the international community because we're not good at reporting. Mm -hmm. We are doing things and we have programs that are ongoing. We have a number of community-based yeah. organizations that are yes. continuing their work, state institutions yes. that are continuing their work. But right now, we have had long delays. So we have an overdue CRC report that okay. we are working on now to, yeah. I think, by the end of this year, it should be in. Yeah. But we don't respond as often as we should to the reporting mechanism. Mm -hmm. Some of that is a lack of capacity. Mm -hmm. We don't have a standing policy institution to provide those reports. We have no because we have created the GSDS system that's going to help us in a couple more years when we have built up all the data and that to produce reports more quick more quickly. But we are working towards that. And so the, the answer is that there's an oversight committee on the part of the CRC within the UN mechanism that does that. And then also the state itself it has to examine itself from time to time and audit its own institutions and assess its its readiness to respond. And of course, the public. 
should yeah. be the main assessors to tell us when community-based organizations, when state mechanisms are not working, mm -hmm. and then we should respond to that. It is an international document, mm -hmm. and so I assume it gets a lot of international attention, especially from international organizations. Yes, um, in terms of, do you ever find yourself in some shady ground, bringing some of these conventions into the Belizean context? And I, I, when you mentioned the labor law earlier, mm -hmm. my mind flashed back to when, um, I think it was one of our own politicians, he posted on Facebook one time and he said, um, during summertime and Christmas time, you see so much children, beggars on the street. Yes. He said, that is a problem. We it need is. to start a little program where they could right. do some work, get some trade, and then channel the money that they would make into their schooling and make sure the basic necessities are there for them. Within two seconds, the bombardment of comments that that the child labor, that not problem. It may not this be child labor, yes I know. Correct. <laughs> and then, and then and on the flip side, other comments coming in saying, but when I'm younger, we does hurry right. go look for summer job because that they get your pay for God at disco, yes. for get, get pay for God at dance. So you have that very shady ground sometimes. Do you, do you have a it challenge is a with balance. that? You, it is a balancing act most times and a lot of it has to do, so the conventions that we have signed to, especially the CRC, the, the, the guarantees and the basic protection mechanisms are so common sense and are so basic that they don't impose an undue burden on the state or even on parents, as I said before, that if you are practicing good parenting in terms of addressing the developmental needs of your child, you would already be doing the CRC and you would already be guaranteeing your child those rights. Where the challenge comes is where there are already gaps, either within the state mechanism to respond or within the parent. And when the parent already has gaps in terms of responding to the developmental needs of their children, then they are challenged by what the CRC is saying because they feel that they are not at that level. So this is where they need support from the community and where mm. they need support from the state mechanisms. Yeah. But it is always a balancing act. States grow in their response um, to CRCs and other conventions that we have signed, as I said before, just example with child labor. We signed on to the ILO conventions. We have had ILO conventions that we have signed on to for years. I mean, we have a very long history. We have signed on to practically every ILO convention, probably except 169 that has come. But we have not been as effective in implementing and making our laws come in compliance with all of the convention requirements because okay. our institutional mechanisms have not advanced as quickly okay. as we would have wanted them mm -hmm. to because, of course, there are capacity limitations in terms of money and human resources and how yeah. fast institutions can, can advance. So some of those challenges create problems from time to time. But as long as states maintain their commitment and keep making progress yeah. on areas that they have committed to, eventually they are going to advance the situation of children and they are going to catch up. Yeah, and we need to take one more very short break, but coming up now is the third installment in RFNG's educational series. Tonight you will learn about the Motor Act Insurance, after which we will be right back. Welcome back to Know Your Rights. I am Khadija, and tonight we are discussing child rights with attorney Diana Shaw. So it, we touched on corporal punishment, mm -hmm. but um, it's also important to note that these uh, new uh, forms of disciplinary actions with the children also trickle into the school system as well as yes. the where facilities for children as well. Yeah. Is that always the case? Will that usually be the case? And how now, especially schools, because I think teachers had a very, they hit, they got the, uh, the blunt of the shot now, mm -hmm. handle yeah. the, the, the new forms. Yeah, so Belize um, amended the Education Act to outlaw corporal punishment in schools. And it, it doesn't mean that there's no discipline that can happen, that your children are misbehaving, there are no consequences but the act is saying that corporate punishment can't be used. And this is because there were several studies that were done in Belize as it relates to violence and how violence affects children. Okay. And we were seeing that we were actually in a cycle and we are still suffering the effects of that. Where children in Belize, especially in some communities, have 
an extreme exposure to violence on a consistent basis. Okay. And that all the studies have shown that this is not good for emotional development, for psychological development, for behavior, cognitive issues, and so on. So part of it is an attempt to lessen the experience and exposure of children to violence and also mm -hmm. part of the recognition that we also had a number of cases of corporal punishment where children were being injured. There were severe cases where children were being beaten with sticks and bruised and cut and so on. And when that was happening, it was not an issue about discipline, that the teacher was taking out an ang their anger on the child. Mm -hmm. And then we also recognized that a lot of that happened because the teacher was not displaying or using proper classroom management techniques. And then sometimes children who had experienced trauma from abuse at home came to school and had behavioral issues. And the teacher would beat the child for the behavioral issues without recognizing that there's an underlying issue that's yeah. affecting the child's behavior. Yeah. And part of it was trying to get schools to recognize, okay, don't just rush to beat children. Try to figure out what's going on with this child because this child may be abused in their home. There may be a situation of trauma that this child has experienced. And if you are going to rush to beat the child, the child is not going to trust you to talk to you about what's happening for one. And two, then that's going to reinforce the child that they are not wanted, that they are not loved. They are going to feel it as rejection, and that's going to complicate the issue of their recovery from whatever trauma that they have been exposed to. So it's trying to bring these different dynamics to help people to recognize, especially people who have the responsibility to connect with children on a daily basis, that yeah. part of your duty, part of your responsibility is to be alert and to be aware when children are in need because they are being abused, when they're experiencing trauma, to understand the indicators. And one of the clear indicators is when you see these behavioral issues. Mm. Children don't just consistently misbehave unless they want, there is a lack of parenting that has happened. So they haven't learned how to socialize properly. They haven't learned how to manage their behavior or two, they may have an emotional or a psychological issue where they have attention deficit and so they can't concentrate for long periods of time. Or the third one is that they have been exposed to abuse and what you're actually seeing is the result of trauma. Yeah. So when we become more educated on these issues, then the response has to change. You can't just keep beating now that you know this because then you recognize that something else has to happen where we have to try to ensure that we are addressing these underlying issues yeah. while still putting a mechanism in place to allow the teacher to manage the class and to address disciplinary issues, but using a different mechanism than corporal punishment. So that was what was intended because mm. in the longer run, that is better for the development of children. And I think a lot of parents and, and teachers who have used positive disciplinary approaches well, certainly that we have worked with through the foundation that I'm involved with, Child Development Foundation, have indicated that that has been beneficial to them. That now when they learn to better manage the classroom, all the children learn. Because of what they were doing when they were beating the child, this was taking over the whole classroom. The teacher would get upset and be quarreling with the child for five minutes, then they would grab the child and beat the child, and the teacher is all worked up and upset and angry, yeah. and after that she has yeah. to take another 10 minutes to calm down before she can teach anything. Mm -hmm. So she's losing a lot of teaching time, Everybody in the class, is, it's disruptive. So when they learn better skills about managing the classroom, anticipating behavioral issues because they get to know the children better and know which children are experiencing difficulties at home and put systems in place to help them so that they learn coping skills and start to manage their own behavior, then the class is better for everybody and it's better for the teacher. And yeah. they can teach and enjoy yeah. teaching and the children can enjoy learning. Yeah. So when we, that focus is there, then you don't want to beat the child all the time because you recognize that this is going to make you tired and give you a heart attack eventually that you have, you have to find a different approach. So this is what understanding rights, what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding that you want to create this supportive and enabling environment yeah. where the parent, the caregiver, the teacher is empowered to support the developmental need of the child mm -hmm. and where they are not in constant conflict with the child's development and so that they are robbing themselves of the enjoyment of experiencing the growth and development of that child. The best interest of the child. The best interest of the Take, child. And that's the main guiding principle of the CRC. Yeah. And definitely yeah. taking the time out to become aware and educated on yes. the data and what it's showing. Um, I'd like to thank you so much for coming and sharing this information with us. But unfortunately, we have come to the end of our show for tonight. Thank you, Diana, for joining us and providing important information on tonight's topic. Tune in next week 
when we will be joined by the Deputy Registrar of Intellectual Property at Belaypo, who will be sharing information with us on, of course, intellectual property. Tonight's episode of Know Your Rights repeats at 1 p.m. on Sunday on Channel 7, and it will also be available for your viewing on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for watching and good night. Thank you.